In this video, I will be discussing heel shapes. There are lots of different heel shapes out there and they differ depending on whether you are working cuff down or toe up. The earliest forms of sock heels were the common or square heel and the shaped common heel. The common heel worked a heel flap longer than what we typically work nowadays and half the stitches are kitchenered and then stitches are picked up along this line and the gusset is worked. This is not a, you know, anatomically good shape here. And there is a seam along the bottom of the heel, which can be uncomfortable. To improve the shape, the same concept is worked, but some decreases are worked along the bottom of the heel flap before the rest are kitchenered and again stitches are picked up. But again, you still have that seam along the bottom heel. To avoid this seam, then, socks are worked with a heel turn at the end of the heel flap before beginning in the round again. Here are two different heel turn methods that are very common nowadays. This is the round heel. The flap is worked and then the turn is begun with a set of stitches left unworked in the middle in the turn. This, this creates a nice round heel that tends to fit very well. This is a half handkerchief heel. The idea is exactly the same, but the turn is begun closer to the center back of the heel. Fewer stitches are left unworked. This one has just one. And the turn makes, this makes for a much narrower heel, a more uh, pointy back of the heel. Less rounded. So, but this can fit uh, some people's feet a little bit better. A couple shapes that are not as commonly seen, but, but can be found now and then, are a Dutch or horseshoe heel. The heel turn, when it is worked, is worked over a consistent number of stitches. Instead of with the round heel, the heel turn gets, the rows get longer and longer, which curves this. For this Dutch or horseshoe heel, the heel turn stitches maintain their stitch count. So it makes this band of stitches in the turn. This allows you to maintain a heel stitch across those stitches uh, along the bottom of the sock as well as in the flap and um, and brings the heel in so uh, it's not quite as round as the round heel um, it's, a, it's a little bit narrower another form is the band heel so with this method a shallower heel flap is worked and some decreases are begun before the turn starts. And again, like the Dutch heel, it's a consistent number of stitches in the heel turn. And the goal is to end up with, when you pick up your gusset stitches, you are already back to your original number of stitches. Therefore, no gusset decreases need to be worked. This makes this heel flap shallower 
So it brings the heel up. It's a much shorter heel. But allows you to have no gusset decreases in this area. One note on the gusset decreases. They do not need to be placed at the top of the heel flap and work down. They may be placed at the bottom of the heel flap. which as you can see, brings the bottom of the heel, it kind of rounds the bottom of the heel and brings the instep up against the bottom of the foot. This could fit some feet better. It also allows you to have this whole instep area open with no decreases, so a stitch pattern could continue without interruption, except for down at the bottom of the foot. There are ways to work a heel flap in a toe up sock. This is a heel flap heel in a toe up sock worked exactly the same way as a heel flap heel worked in a cuff down sock. But you can see it looks, um, it looks maybe a little funny to our sock knitter eyes when this is what we expect to see, this is kind of turned on its head. But these are not visible and are in your shoes, so uh, you may not mind that it perhaps looks a little funny. But that is totally possible. If you want a toe-up heel flap sock, however, to look more traditional, you can work a set of increases to get to your total gusset stitches, and then work a heel turn, and then work a flap, which is worked on a consistent number of stitches with decreases. So very similar to the Dutch or horseshoe heel, where the heel turn is worked over a consistent number of stitches. The decreases, there's a decrease line on each end to join it to the heel flap. Well, with this, the heel flap is being joined to the gusset and those gusset stitches are going away as you're joining and, um, and then you are back to your original number of stitches to work the cuff. You can work a heel flap, uh, a heel stitch as in this sample on the heel flap and it looks much more traditional but it's a heel flap in a toe up sock. Another form of a toe up heel turn treatment is the flegal heel. And again, increases are worked until you reach a set number of stitches. And then one giant heel turn is worked to get back to your original stitch count. This this um, angle is a little bit wider than, than say, the, heel, the toe up heel flap. You know, this is a bit more 90 degree. This is a little bit of a, of a wider angle. Um, but when on the foot, it fits fine. Two other options for toe up socks are short row heels or afterthought heels. Short row heels are worked, you can work cuff down or toe up. The sock is worked to the heel spot. A set of short rows, a wedge is worked along the heel. So first a set of decreasing short rows and then a set of increasing short rows to turn the 90 degrees and then the sock resumes. There are multiple ways to work these short rows. These are wrap and turn short rows, but you can substitute other methods. And a uh, variation on this is the yo-yo heel, where again, the sock is worked to the heel spot. A set of decreasing short rows is worked, but uh, these use German short rows. And before beginning the increasing wedge, a set of full rounds 
um, like two full rounds are worked before the increasing wedge is worked. And this gets some separation between the rows, the resolving short row row and the resuming short row rows, which helps to smooth and eliminate any holes. Another variation on short row heel is the sweet tomato heel by Cat Bordy. This is a, you work a set, instead of working over half the stitches, the total number of stitches for your heel, as in traditional short row heels, half the number of stitches are used. You work two thirds of the stitches in the heel. And instead of a uh, decreasing wedge of short rows and then an increasing wedge to turn 90 degrees, you work three decreasing wedges of short rows and then resume working. Yeah. So this rounds this heel uh, quite a lot, uh, but provides for a wider heel peak to instep measure um, to give a better fit, less stretch in the fabric diagonally because that there's a little more fabric there. And this might fit your foot better depending on your foot anatomy. Another method for toe up socks that could also be used for cuff down is an afterthought heel. If you have forethought, you can work a forethought afterthought heel where you knit uh, from the toe up and place waist yarn along half the stitches at the spot where you want to insert your heel after the rest of the sock is done. Then you un unwork the waist yarn, placing the live stitches on either side onto needles, and then you work a heel. This is a wedge heel. Any type of toe treatment could be used for your afterthought heel because you are simply working a wedge to, to close that fabric. So this is um, how you would typically work a toe in a sock, but worked on the heel with the decreases at either side of the heel corner. And then the stitches are kitchenered at the end. So because any type of toe could be worked, you could work an afterthought heel and then work a round shape for your heel. This had a set of eight decreases in the round and more plain rows rounds are worked in between your decrease rounds because the rate of decrease is a little bit faster. And then at the end, you simply pull your working yarn through the live stitches and close it like at the top of a hat. So if you do not like to work Kitchener, this would be an option. Now, there is a little bit of a, of a bump in the sock while being worn right there on the back of the heel. So keep that in mind with that method. If you find short row heels and afterthought heels to not provide enough fabric in the heel peak to instep measure and you, your socks are stretching um, across that measure um, more than you would like, you could add a gusset. This is a small gusset added to uh, a short row heel. Um, a set of three increases were worked. So it's a very tiny gusset. You could work a, a larger one by beginning it farther away from where you want your heel to be. And increases are added the heel is still worked over the original half of the stitches, so not over the uh, extra gusset stitches. And then when the heel is done, those stitches are decreased away over a set of rows. This gives just a little bit more fabric in that area where you want a little bit more room. Another option that works with afterthought heels is to work some short row rounds before beginning your afterthought heel. So you work a round and then work a set of short rows in the corner and then work a round 
and work a set a matching set of short rows in the opposite corner and then begin your heel. This adds a little bit more fabric right there in that measure that we're looking for some more fabric. So those are some heel treatments uh, and kind of a quick comparison between the different methods. I hope this was a helpful video for you. Thanks for watching.